TCI is brought to you by Escandarea, standing at TaylorMade Stallions, the most dominant three-year-old this decade. Watch for his first yearlings at upcoming sales. Welcome back to TCI, your inside track to the Breeders' Cup alongside Joel Cunningham. I'm John Siegel. Joel, we have a huge show today. We have to recap a lot of races from last weekend, and we have a lot of races to talk about this weekend. But I want to start off with a Breeders' Cup winner from last year, and that's Royal Delta. You know, she was very impressive. She's been a little shaky this year so far, but I thought in the personal ends, and Joel, she's back, and she's back in a big way. It's been fun to see her refine her craft. I mean, she's always had talent and shown talent frankly, from the time she broke her maiden as a tear but what's different about her now, John, she's had this big run from the clouds, from off the pace. Now she's gotten into that beautiful cruising speed. As she's gotten older, she's sort of refined her style a little bit, and she flashes it immediately in the race. See, she does not wait for a 3 8 pole to unwind that long stride of her. She starts it from the gate, and frankly, she just runs fillies off their feet. She went quick in the personal instant. That was not a, a slow pace by any means, and she finished off of it. Poor Authenticity, who's number two on our TCI Top 5. We'll go now uh, to, the, to the TCI Top 5 in, in what is now the Philly Merritt Distaff. No right. longer the ladies' classic. That marketing uh, phrase is over. It's back to the Philly Merritt Distaff. I kind of like that. Authenticity, who I still think is number two on the Top 5. We haven't moved any positions here. I still believe she's number two. and She was clearly second best to Royal Delta. And I tell you what, if Royal Delta remains this brilliant to the end of the year, she might be worth taking on the Colts. That's how good she's gotten back into her form in her last two races. Well, let's move now to uh, the Colts. We had, you know, some horses running in the classic division. I want to start off with the Traverse Stakes. We see Will Take Charge, a horse that we really thought after seeing his performance in the Jim Dandy, we really thought, man, if he can get that extra distance, we could see it. It would be close, but, yeah. I mean, it set up exactly what we were thinking. Absolutely. Horses that come around this time of year at Saratoga and like that track, have a big edge and he's always shown talent now will take charge coming back in the Travers John it turned into a grinders race at the end I was actually surprised at how the speed figures came back on this race I didn't think they were going to be that quick because there was a bunch of them there at the wire but will take charge got a huge brisk number a 109 I mean that was faster than game on dude uh, which we'll talk about in a second so a big performance here he barely gets his nose up it became a grinders race I think orb was short Clearly needed a prep, came right. up empty the last eighth of a mile. I think Palace Malice lost all chance of the break, was last, took him completely out of his game on a slow pace. Marino capitalized on that slow pace. Verrazano didn't get the distance. And once all that sort of happened the last eighth of a mile, Will Take Charge just kept coming. He was outmoved on the turn, but he kept coming, 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 and he wins by a nose. Well, you mentioned how brilliant Royal Delta was. You have to just say that Game on Dude had the same kind of performance in the Pacific Classic. Yeah. I was very impressed with the way that this horse won. I thought there was a some strange tactics by some of the other horses, but Game on Dude, much the best. Always been very high on Game on Dude, John. Last year, I think he was the horse to beat in the Breeders' Cup. Obviously, he broke poorly that day. It was the wrong day to break poorly. Took him out of his game, but we saw a horse that came in, frankly, uh, you know, as we talked about last week, I was skeptical about his poly form. He's 0 for 3 on the poly track, the real poly track, when you look at the Maidan tap at a surface, and then both tries at Del Mar, no wins and three starts. Clearly not as brilliant on that surface, but it wasn't the case. We'll go now to the Twin Spires TV race replay for the Pacific Classic, and he runs a dynamite race, but I, we have to show the start, because watch Delegation here. Completely out breaks Game On Dude. Game On Dude's back here. And what does he do? He goes to the outside. He's more worried about the 65 to long to one long shot than he is Game on Dude. Get, meanwhile, Game on Dude makes it easy lead in here. I could not understand what team delegation. They totally outthought themselves with this race. Now we go into the stretch here. As I mentioned, he got an easy lead, a very manageable pace, and it was over after that, yeah. John. They're all they're all just uh, vying for second behind this horse. Unbelievable performance. He gets a brisk number 108. Now there was some, you know, talk about maybe was was a time off in this race. Uh, Del Mar's come out and said that the time was indeed correct. So a very good performance here. Now Game on Dude's shown that he's back and he's very much a leader in that handicap division. Well, Joel, we looked at the TCI Top 5 for the Ladies Classic or the Distaff. We're not going to update the TCI Top 5 for the Classic just yet because we see Painter back in action in the Woodward this weekend. Reports are the horse is doing great, but hey, let's hear it from Zayat Stables themselves. We have Justin Zayat, the racing manager of Zayat Stables on the line. Hey, Justin, thank you so much for coming on the show. Hi, thank you for having me. So we saw a painter school today at Saratoga. He's settling in nicely. Tell me, what, what are you guys feeling about him? We're feeling very good about him. I mean, we have a good post position. We drew well. Uh, he's been training very, very well up to the race. I mean, his work's at Delmar 
have been an improvement every single week. Each was better than the last. So he's sitting on a big race, and I'm extremely excited. I can't wait. Well, Justin, I know you didn't get the result you wanted to last time out in the San Diego, but he ran well in defeat. Polytrack probably obviously wasn't his best surface, but you get back on the dirt now. Third start off the layoff, back on the dirt going a mile and an eighth. Tell me again what you think, him getting back to that surface and that distance against top caliber horses. I think returning to the dirt will only shoot him better. Um, stretching out to mile and eighth is what uh, Painters wanted. I mean, I think returning to the dirt, two turns, we're sitting on a big race here. Well, Justin, you guys are going for the grade one double there at Saratoga. You also have two horses running in the Forgo, another field that you know, some really good horses in there. You're bringing over Fast Bullet, and you also have Justin Phillip, a horse who's really on top of his game right now. How are you guys feeling about that race? I'm feeling really good about it. I mean, uh, both of them are doing superb as they were going into the True North uh, when they ran as an entry. Um, Justin Phillip is coming off his grade one win in the Vanderbilt, and we actually planned at first to wait until the Vosper, but he was training so well that we just had to run him there. I mean, going for a grade one, another one in Saratoga, it's not much to think about when you have a horse that's doing so well like him. And Fast Bullet, I mean, he's training very well. He's uh, now with uh, Dwayne Lucas at Saratoga, has been training on the track there, and he's also sitting on a very big race. I mean, looking for a nice Zia Stevens exacto again. So can we get a prediction out of you? An exact box. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you go for your namesake, man. Justin Phillip, he's named after you. I figured that's where you'd go. Uh, no, for sure. I, I'd, I'd love to see my namesake win. That would make, that would make me happier than anyone in the entire world. But I'd also love to see Fast Bullock get a grade one because he deserves one. Absolutely. Well, Justin, good luck, man. I know it's a big day for you. Uh, we'll be rooting for you. Good luck with Painter, and uh, we hope to see you guys at the Breeders' Cup. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. So, Joel, Justin, a little uh, non-committal there of which Zayat horse he thinks has a big shot in the forego. Tell me, do you like a Zayat horse in there? I've always liked Fast Bullet, John, a horse that's had some soundness problems but has that brilliant natural speed, as Justin alluded to. I actually think he's the horse to beat in here if he can find a comfortable trip on the front end, doesn't get hounded too badly. Uh, obviously, Justin Phillip. Brilliant horse, ran great last time out. You have to worry about a bounce for him, though. Fast Bullet handled him well on Belmont Stakes Day when they ran against each other. All right, tell me, Painter back in the Wolvers, he's your number one. Is he your pick in the What a great Wolver race what this is. I mean, I know they've, we've had a couple defections, but what a great race. Painter has such a tactical edge over most of this field that's mostly closers, John, that I just think, frankly, unless successful Dan chooses to go out of the gate, Painter's going to have a big tactical edge, and to me, he's just good enough from a talent standpoint that I think he's going to be hard to catch. You know, Joel, we really see the, the kickoff of the two-year-old campaigns mm -hmm. right now. We know we got three major grade ones over the weekend, yeah. including the Del Mar debutante, the spin away, and then, of course, you have the hopeful stakes, which they bump back up to a grade one. That runs on Monday. It's going to be exciting to see those two-year-olds. Absolutely, man. Del Mar Futurities next week. We'll get a better look at the two-year-old picture next week and start breaking down top fives as we're looking towards the Breeders' Cup Juvenile and Juvenile Phillies division. So that's always fun this time of year. And then also we'll have a top five to the Classic next week. All right, thank you, Joel. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you come back next week. As Joel mentioned, we'll have the top five for the Classic. We'll also take a deeper look at the two-year-olds.